that's such a weird game. Mm. Yeah. Why? Well, Real Madrid didn't, did not play well by their standards, but they've carved out a win, which is probably going to take them through now. But I wonder, for all those chances that Bayern Munich had, I just wonder if we're looking back now again at a little lack of sharpness in the key area where, and this has been discussed many times, the Bundesliga's over. Yes, they're still winning on a Saturday or a Sunday or a Friday, whenever they're playing. But that little edge has gone. It's been gone for quite a bit now. And it just looked as if they played well, but that little bit of sharpness in the final third, and you saw it there from the Lewandowski chance at the end, was just gone. A, a reminder for Bayern, of course, a lot of injuries going into this. You had mm. no Neuer, no Alaba, Vidal out as well. Of course, during the game, you saw Robin go and off Boateng. and Boateng. It's yeah. got to obviously affect things. Well, it, it does, but I'd like to say that anybody who didn't see this game and actually watched the highlights might think Bayern played well, mm. but they didn't. You know, all of those chances didn't come from you know, three, four, five, six passes, you know, nice little movements. I mean, they were all, they were all just sort of, they just appeared, set pieces and balls thrown in. There was no real football that Bayern played for me. So, honestly, I think at the end of the day, it's the right result. I really? Was, I always thought Real Madrid, even if Bayern had scored, I always thought Real Madrid had another gear. It's a lot of mistakes in this game whether you're Real Madrid or Bayern Munich, in particular Bayern Munich, and those mistakes Real Madrid takes advantage of. But across the board, underwhelming performances by a lot of players yeah. in both Real Madrid and Bayern Munich. The difference is, is that Bayern Munich, in, in, in positions where they can score a goal, they take a donkey touch. It gets away from them, and that's it. Where Real Madrid had their chances, however limited they were, in transition, Marcos and Asensio comes on from the bench, and what, what does he do with his first touch on the ball, or one of his first touches on the ball? He puts it in the back of the net, it's 2-1, and Real Madrid doesn't have to do much more than that. And so it is the responsibility of Bayern Munich to then carry the rest of the game, and they didn't. And there was a lack of emotion in this match, and there was a lack of emotion in, uh, in the Alliance, Alliance Arena. And, uh, and, and it, just, it just felt, if you compare it and contrast it to what it was like at Anfield yesterday... And the electricity in that stadium, none of that in Germany, none of that in Munich. And you could sense it that the players didn't truly believe that they were capable of scoring or overcoming whatever deficit they had against Real Madrid. There was, there was a real acceptance from everybody. Yeah, it's just like, okay, this is happening. on the field and off the field that when that second goal went in, it was done and dusted. I think they all started feeling sorry for themselves. You know, you spoke about all the injuries before the game. Mm. And then you had Robin and you had Boateng as well. It just, it just felt as though they just accepted that, you know what, this is it. Manny missed a half a chance. Well, not half a. Manny missed two, maybe three for Liverpool. But if you had transported that Liverpool front three and their current form into the Bayern Munich side, they'd have won this game. Sure. That was the difference. Yeah. Didn't play great, but had chances, but lacked sharpness. How many times do you see Lewandowski not even hit, hit the target, try to clip it over the keeper from what? 12 yards? Doesn't How many times does Frank Ribery take a touch like that in the final third? I mean, they're Doesn't rare. <laughs> they're rare from, from players of that stock. Just a little lack of sharpness again, maybe. So how are those touches reflected in mm. Steve Nichols' oh, player God. ratings? Uh, let's take a look then, Stevie. I, I do need to change one. Oh, oh already? Okay. Already yeah. we haven't even shown I them? Actually, I actually gave Lewandowski six. I should have given him four as well. Yeah. You know, two chances in the game that he, nine times out of ten, would put away the header straight at the keeper and then the one that he puts wide. Um, Ribery would have got more than eight uh, if he hadn't had the donkey touch. Because Hammond's he... got a six for what? Hammond's got a six for what? Just because he was there. Oh, well, he played the <laughs> part. He played, he played, it's a high mark for being there. Second. He's the guy that put Kimmich through for the goal. OK, all right, then. Muller, you got Muller, six. six. Muller, Muller. Muller did what he normally does. He's a guy that never actually shows much. He always appears in the box and will take a chance or whatever. He had a couple of opportunities that actually his teammates stopped him rather than Real Madrid defenders. And Martinez did a lot of running around. He, wa he worked his tail off. Rafinha gets four because, I mean, that pass that, that leads to the second goal and the, and the goal that finishes this tie, he gets four. Almost six. Tried hard. Boateng gets seven because he wasn't on long enough to make any mistakes. Kimmich got the goal. Um, and Ulrich gets six because, although you could say everybody else he had no chances. chances, you could say he had no chance with the goals, 
but at the same time, I think he should. So at what stage, at yeah. what stage, given these numbers, do you just go, I'll just give him a six as well, I never <laughs> <Yeah>. say. <laughs> give him all hey, six. Uh, after the right back. <laughs> <laughs> Goalkeeper right back. Ah, just give him a six. It's a bottom one better off getting off the field. Lewandowski stood I'm not getting out. time for this. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I want a cup of tea. Hey. <laughs> I need a cup of tea. <laughs> Do the match you sell the next time now. <laughs> How long did they take it? <laughs> Anybody got a biscuit for my tea? I need a biscuit for my tea. That's all I um, Let's talk um, Lewandowski. Mm. Obviously, you know, regarded as one of the best strikers in the world, but we are going to judge him on these sort of performances in these big games as we do other players. And he had a shocker. Yeah, and... and... You could say there are times where we judge strikers and say, well, he didn't get an opportunity. There wasn't a service for him. Well, there were services here for Robert Lewandowski. And, and the one where he's clipping it over the top is one that he does on a weekly basis in the Bundesliga. It's something that he does in his sleep. So he's got to score that chance. As simple as that. If you, if you put the best players, the top-tier players in the world in that position, in this game, in this scenario, you have to finish the chance. That's what is expected of you. If you don't deliver consistently, then perhaps you're not as top tier as you think you are. It was another big Real Madrid match without Gareth Bale. Ahead of that tie against Bayern Munich, the Welshman said you can never rule out anything in football. It's an honor for everyone to be linked with Bayern Munich. But as of now, I'm a Real Madrid player. Speculation about Bale's future is only going to snowball over the next few months, as it has done, I suppose, over previous summers. The big difference now, gentlemen, I would suggest is that you would feel that he needs to move. Mm. Well, in a football parlance, yeah. Yeah. And as a lifestyle, I'm sure it's pretty good out there in Madrid, but from a football side of view, it's taken a real turn for him. Not only the injuries, but now the fitness is good, I think, and then there's just a lack of game time, and there's so many other players, not just one player, there's two or three that can all play similar positions that are all, and by the way, they're younger, and they're all getting put in before them. Let's say that there's something to this. Bayern Munich. Yeah, it's interesting because like when he was linked to Manchester United, he goes, like, "No, I'm a Real Madrid." He was player. dismissive. Here, here it's a little bit, a little bit flirtier. Uh, yes, uh, like I'm here. Yes, yeah. You know, <laughs> he's showing a little bit. He's, he's he's essentially saying, you know what? It wouldn't be the worst thing in the world to come to Bayern Munich. And if you look at what Bayern Munich needs, well. Maybe an upgrade to players that are getting older. Sure. Arjen Robin is getting older. Yep. Frank Ribery is getting older. Winger type that can use speed to cut inside and take a shot with his left foot. Bale can do that. So maybe this makes all the sense in the world. Maybe the pennies dropped eventually. Listen, if you're Gareth Bale and Benzema, who we all expect is going to be moving on, gets on before you, mm -hmm. then you have to realise that your time's up. Because there's no question his time's well, up. Well, you look at it today. Isco, Benzema... Lucas Vasquez Asensio. and Asensio. Asensio. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. The problem is money. He's going, to have to, he's going to have to take a drop because particularly Bayern Munich, who have a, a wage scale, will not be paying him or want to pay him anywhere near what he's getting in Real Madrid. That leaves Manchester United. Yeah. Who, who else can pay the money that would want them? But it's, a, it's a similar move as to what James Rodriguez did. Yeah. No longer use in, in Real Madrid. Surplus felt like he was out of, out of the picture, and so he went to Bayern Munich and, and has had a, a decent season with Bayern Munich. Well, I, I think Gareth Bale needs a transition somewhere, and, and Bayern Munich is not a bad club to go to. Would I be wrong in suggesting that, that James is on loan because Bayern wouldn't either come up with the transfer fee or pay the wages? It's a... It's a Fractional job, isn't it? Real well, I mean, I, I mean Man United are a great name for, uh, for to have on your CV, but I mean, who would you choose, Greg? Forget money. Well, well so is Bayern Munich. Forget money. At the moment, would you go Bayern or Manchester United? At the moment, I go Bayern because you don't know exactly what next season what we're going to get from from Man United. Right. We do know next season, barring a disaster, if he goes to Bayern Munich, he's getting a Bundesliga title, probably a German Cup, and they'll be flirting around at the later stages of the Champions League. You the same? Yeah. Yeah, if we're, talk if we're talking pure football, you know, again, players start as kids because they want to win medals. Yeah. If you go to Bayern Munich, you're guaranteed medals uh, in Germany, and then uh, maybe you can do something in the Champions League. Also, the level of pressure and scrutiny and, 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 yeah. and the expectation. The moment he steps into Manchester United, well, here comes the saviour. Now, this is the guy that's going to put us over the top. And the, the moment that he has a couple of games that doesn't quite work out, then we go back on the well, Gareth Bale is done. Whereas in Germany, he's kind of living his own story over there. And, yeah, there may be pressure because it's Bayern Munich because it's Gareth Bale. 
but you expect that as a superstar. I just think that the pressure will be much more so on Manchester United. The one downside could be Kovac, the coach. It's not the most exciting appointment, is it? No. Mm. And he could... I mean, we saw Ancelotti go under with some of the senior players. Yeah. I mean, he could go under if things don't go well and they turn on him. He's just going to get swallowed up. So that might be the one thing that makes him unsure. I don't know. Yeah. I don't expect it to change in the Bernabeu. I don't. I, don't, I, I can see them just allowing Bayern that little bit of possession again and then hit them on the counter. It's set up perfectly for them. And, and I just don't think... I mean, we can talk about Real Madrid. They'll give you chances. So will Bayern Munich. Yeah. So I, I don't... I, I, Zidane will not say it's over, but, but I don't see a way back for Bayern Munich. I really don't. Let's take a look at what the SBI has mm -hmm. to say, shall we, before we hear from Ali and Stevie. Yeah, 70%. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 actually, this this seems about right in the sense that Bayern Munich doesn't seem to have enough in the attack, enough in creativity, enough in confidence, and enough in self belief to go into the Bernabeu and score two goals. That version of Bayern Munich goes to the Bernabeu. Do you see him scoring a couple of goals? I, I don't think so. And so Real Madrid for me continues on. I think that's about right, only because Real Madrid defensively yep. will give you chances. Because for me, Bayern Munich are not that good a side. Uh, they don't have that many sparks. We expect Lewandowski to be better. Uh, and if you're relying on Ribéry, who's in his mid-30s, and I just don't think you've got but enough. But i tell you what, if I was Liverpool, I wouldn't be overly worried. Well, that's exactly no, the no. point I was going to bring up. In, yeah. in the fact, if you're watching this... No, I, I, you know, there'll be Ro there might be the odd Roma fan or two saying, well, that's presumptuous. Let's presume yep. they don't capitulate. A few weeks ago, or a couple of months ago, I would have said, no, nah, you know, Liverpool are not ready. You know, if Barca are still in it, if Real Madrid, possibly Bayern Munich, I think it would be a bridge too far. But what, watching how, on a one-off game this is, not over the course of a season, but watching how Liverpool have stepped forward and how much they can hurt teams with their... I mean, the pace that Liverpool play at, play at is a damn sight quicker than what Bayern Munich played at tonight. Yep. And if it is Real Madrid in the final, yes, they'll be favourites, but... Two months ago, I would have said, no, I can't see Liverpool beating any of the big teams. But I think that narrative for me has changed. But Real Madrid would be favoured based on resume, not based on yeah. what they're doing, on yeah. what you see on the field. Because if you evaluate what they do on the field, you have to be encouraged if you're a Liverpool and a Liverpool fan. It's like, wait a minute, this team can run at, we can get at, we can attack them, we can expose them. And if we do, we're going to be in a position where we can win ourselves a Champions League that I don't think many people thought it was possible. No. Couldn't agree with Craig Moore. I certainly didn't think it was So you possible. disagree with me? <laughs> it, it didn't understand. I don't know what you said. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah. No idea what you said. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> so you, you're happy? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. Going forward, Liverpool will hurt any, any team, regardless whether it's Bayern or Real Madrid, although I think it's Real Madrid that will go through, they can, they can score goals on them, no question. I wonder if, if Atleti play a couple of great games and, and they, are, they are expected to win, the, the Arsenal board might look and say, I tell you what, we could do with a bit of that. You know, good play, physical, organised. I wonder if they're thinking, you know, that could be us. But then we we'll keep hearing, well, he's not their type of guy. So you're you talking know? about Simeone? Oh, sorry, I'm yeah, sorry, I'm talking about Simeone, who would be kind of the main choice for a lot of clubs these days. Sure. Mm -hmm. But we keep, well, I've heard from, from some publications in England coming out of Arsenal, well, you know, we do things a certain way. <laughs> but is Arsenal not a bit of a step down from where he's been and what he's achieved for Atleti? Well, yeah, but you might, maybe he feels it's a time to move on. I mean, I, I'm not saying he would go there. I'm saying they, I think they, <laughs> they certainly should be looking. Out yeah. of interest, you've got, obviously, Arsenal and Chelsea probably looking for managers in mm -hmm. the summer. Would you go to Chelsea or Arsenal if you were Simeone? Just... I know you hate hypotheticals, Steve. If I'm, if I'm Simeone, I would, I would probably go to Arsenal because I think he'll get more time to turn things around. Right. Uh, and, and if I'm him, I'm thinking, I came into Atletico Madrid and they were in a bit of a mess and I turned them in to European Championship uh, finalists. That's, a, that, that's something that I think he probably would like to do again. Mm. And I think he can do that at Arsenal. I don't know that at Chelsea. Chelsea's... You better produce pretty quick, otherwise you're at the door. Uh, he's not on our list, by the way. When you take a look at the odds for the next manager, Luis Enrique, uh, favourite, Ali. Uh -huh. Arsene Wenger was asked about him today. He says, I don't want to say very much, but he's a very good manager. Um, does this make sense, Luis Enrique? 
it makes sense if you are continuing to pursue that playing style of a lot of passing of the ball and movement and so on and so forth and this and that. But is he bringing uh, Lionel Messi with him? I don't uh, think he's. Uh, no, no, he's not. And so, and, and is he bringing an Iniesta with him? Uh, no, probably not. So the, the truth is that it just doesn't do enough for me in, in that you have to change the mentality at Arsenal. You have to challenge your players in a way that I don't think Luis Enrique would. I would be all for Simeone, not for Luis Enrique. You don't like this at I all, do you? I don't know. At Roma, they couldn't wait to get him out the door. Mm. They mutually agreed between the two of them that just, just on you go. Well, that's what and mutually of course, means. But. Yeah, and of course... <laughs> well, thanks for the education. <laughs> you all right today. Oh, yeah. And of course, <laughs> he goes to Barcelona and he's got all the tools. Particularly a back four that, that at the time could not only pass the way out against anybody, but could actually defend. And then all of a sudden he's like, well, yeah, see, I told you I could do this job. I don't think this guy is the man for Arsenal whatsoever. I'd rather see Patrick Vieira go in there. Mm. Right. I think it's a longer term project, get some experience around him, uh, make sure the recruitment side's proper and look at a longer term. First and foremost, it gets to, I think it gets the fans right back on side. Yep. And then you take it from... They're not going to be winning the, the, the Premier League next year. You're not going to make that jump to where Man City are now. So it's a longer-term project. And I honestly think somebody like Vieira would be better than some of the names at the top of the list. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Extra Time. We've just got, got over the excitement of Real Madrid by Munich. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh. Hmm. Oh. Tonight was a defensive masterclass by Ramos. Does Steve Nicol agree? Elite defender, if there ever was one. We've, chat, we've just sat here and spoken about the chances that Bayern Munich had, right? Right? Uh, uh, so, yes. so, if he's been so brilliant, how do they get these chances? He's the guy, he's supposed to be the linchpin, the, the organiser, the, the everything at the back. So how did he get all these chances then? What happens if Ramos scores against Liverpool in the final? Oh no. Oh, oh it's over. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Collapse. I don't wish to repeat myself, but I'm going to. Uh oh. Listen, Ramos in the opposition penalty box is an absolute danger for any team, never mind Liverpool. So it wouldn't surprise me to see him scoring a goal. Right. Whether it's us. Or Roma, because the tie's not over. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, defensively, that's it. Well, it's easy, isn't it? When he comes up for set pieces, free kicks, corners, you just assign your man. Mr. Lovren. Lovren. Well, Lovren. 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 What could possibly go wrong? To be fair to Ramos, it's Talk not to. easy. Otherwise, we wouldn't be talking about how dangerous he is in set pieces. Mm. And then the, penalty, the opposition penalty ball. That's oh. a nice yeah. matchup. Right. And no. I would suggest that if indeed it's it is. If indeed it it's is like Mr. Lovren, his like, assignment oh, is to watch Ramos, then we're in big trouble. We're cutting your hair. Oh, boy. Oh, it's getting cut tonight. Yes, the janitor. Take the helmet off, yep. put the other helmet on. School janitor uh, finishes <laughs> about half six. There it is. Janitor finishes, locks yeah. up at the school, pops around Stevie's house, cuts the hair. Mm, right, right. Six o'clock, yeah, we'll be done here in about 15 minutes. A little trim in the eyebrows. Up on the car, yeah, yeah. yeah. Big trim in the eyebrows. Yep. <laughs> Necessary. Large. Trim. Lawnmower. <laughs> it seems playing at home is no more an advantage. Was it a lawnmower? Was it a lawnmower? <laughs> Funny lawnmower's in Venezuela, by the way. Oh. Oh. Going through, <laughs> through your eyebrows. Going through your eyebrows, yes. <laughs> it seems playing at home is no more an advantage in the Champions League. A lot of recent results infer to that. Do you think so? No. You, did you uh, see Liverpool playing at home? That's an advantage playing in that environment. Is it, easier think, to, is it easier I don't to... think Rome is calling Liverpool and saying, by the way, can we play the second leg at Anfield? <laughs> <laughs> is it easier to play away than it was in your day? No. Uh, sorry, yes. Big pub. <laughs> Big pub. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, every stadium you go to now is pristine, the fields are pristine, the whole thing's... Yeah, I mean, you have to deal with all kinds of distractions not just on the field but off the field uh, when I was playing so yeah absolutely it's easier to play and you can't kick anybody nowadays either so that makes it easier.
just can't ask him again, will you? Just... Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> who, I'm enjoying it. Who, who has a better chance to progress, Bayern or Roma? Bayern. Bayern? Well, yeah, I'll go Bayern. Bayern? Yeah. Yes? Roma's not advancing. Finally, as former top flight athletes, <clears throat> What is the mindset of... I know you never included yourself in that. He's got well, of course not. I'm not a former top flying no, athlete, no, am I? I know. He's, he's got, got, he's yeah. got tendinitis. Yeah, he does. Uh, yeah. 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 He, was on, he was running a treadmill for five minutes. Yeah. And he's been out of action ever since. He's tough as old boots, that boy. What? <laughs> absolute. He's an absolute Trojan. He's only been in the trenches yet? with him. Yeah. yeah, I have stopped limping now. Mm -hmm. Don't shoot! <laughs> Don't shoot! I've got tendinitis! <laughs> <laughs> I give up. They're right here. They're right here. I give yeah. up. Look at me. You got to be a surprise. Yeah. Not... Yeah. Yeah. As former top flight athletes, <laughs> what is the mindset of cup competitions compared to league games? Is either one really easier? Because whatever Madrid is doing in the Champions League seems to be working. Do you have a different mindset going to say FA Cup than you did Premier League? A bit more exciting as it goes on. Well, and back in your day when, they, back when the FA Cup actually something to be excited about getting to the final. Yeah, you, as, it went, as you got to the quarterfinals and, uh, and the semi-finals of the FA Cup, you got excited about it because back then it was a big competition. So there was a difference between that yeah. and league games. I just think there's a finality to it. You know, okay, this is what we have to concentrate on. We don't have to worry about that and this sure. and who we play on the weekend. No, this is the moment and we put our best performance in this 90 minutes, we have a chance to go through. I concur with my learned friends here on my left-hand side. Oh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, that is it. Extra time is done. Stevie's got to get his hair cut. Oh, uh, yeah, exactly. Come on. Are you back tomorrow? Hi. You don't even have a watch on. <laughs> You're off tomorrow, you know? <laughs> no. Uh, Arsenal Athletic Madrid uh, will be the main talking point on the next edition of ESPN FC. <laughs>